Hello, I'm Dr. Smith. I'm a lecturer and writer in the areas of personal finance and investing, and today we're going to be talking about laddering certificates. But before we can appreciate the benefits of laddering certificates, we first need to discuss liquidity. In investments, liquidity is the ease at which you can transfer an asset into cash. As an example, a house might be a fantastic asset, but it's not very liquid, as it might take months to sell. On the other hand, a checking account is extremely liquid, as you can write checks from the account or simply use your debit card to access the cash. Oftentimes in banking products, the more liquid the asset, the lower the associated rate of return. For instance, if your checking account is anything like my checking account, it might have a rate of return, but it's so low that you don't even notice. A savings account, on the other hand, might have a higher required minimum investment, but it might also have a higher rate of return associated with it. Certificates of deposit, or simply CDs, are another type of banking product known as a time deposit, which tend to be even less liquid than a savings account. Therefore, CDs are likely to carry an even higher rate of return than savings accounts do. The way CDs work is pretty simple. An investor saves up some money and then takes that money to a bank. Then the investor promises to leave that money at the bank for a certain period of time. Typical CD time periods range from three months to about five years. The bank then takes that money and lends it out. And as with all loans, the bank is going to charge interest on that loan to the borrower. The borrower then pays interest to the bank and the bank shares a portion of that interest with the investor. Since the bank doesn't have to worry about the investor demanding their money back at any time, like with a checking account, the bank is then able to make a longer term loan with this money. And longer term loans tend to have higher associated interest rates. This is why CDs are able to pay higher interest rates than bank savings accounts. In fact, the longer that the investor is willing to part with their money, typically the higher the associated interest rate of the CD. Certificates of deposit can be a good saving strategy for some people. For instance, if an investor had a relatively short term savings goal, say four or five years, but they were worried that they would spend the money if they had it, then locking that money away in a CD can be a pretty good idea. On the other hand, other investors just want to try to get a higher rate of return for their emergency fund or their rainy day fund. In this case, CDs provide that option. Most banking products, CDs included, always state the rate that they pay is an annual percentage rate or an APR. As an example, if an investor had $1,000 that they wanted to invest in a 3% APR CD, after one year they would receive $30 in interest along with their $1,000 in principal back. On the other hand, let's assume we have another investor who is unwilling to part with their money for an entire year and instead chooses to invest their $1,000 in a 6 month 2% APR CD. At the end of six months, their CD comes due and they can access their $1,000 principal along with a little bit less than $10 in interest. Then if they choose to, they can reinvest that money and at the end of the year earn $20. But is there a way that we could attempt to maximize both, obtain a high rate of return without sacrificing liquidity? Well, that's where laddering the certificates comes into play. This is Jerry. Jerry has an emergency fund that consists of a checking account and a savings account but he'd like to take a portion of his money and invest it in CDs. However, Jerry is torn between the liquidity associated with a six-month CD and the higher rate of return associated with a one-year CD. It looks like a CD laddering strategy might make sense for Jerry. Instead of investing the full $6,000 into either the six-month or the one-year CD, what Jerry could choose to do is only invest $500 into a one-year CD this month. Next month, Jerry invests another $500 into a one-year CD. This $500 monthly saving strategy continues for an entire year, after which the full $6,000 will be invested. After one year, one CD comes due every month. So every month, Jerry has access to $515. If he needs the money, he can take it and use it. But if he doesn't need the money, he can take it and reinvest it into another one-year CD. This strategy provides Jerry with both additional liquidity and a higher rate of return. Let's look at another slightly more sophisticated example. This is Elaine. Elaine also has $6,000 that she would like to invest in a CD as part of her emergency fund, but she's been eyeing a three-year CD with a 5% rate of return. A laddering strategy might also make sense for Elaine. She could go to the bank 
And instead of purchasing one three-year CD with her $6,000, she can invest $1,000 into a six-month CD, a second $1,000 into a one-year CD, a third $1,000 into an 18-month CD, a fourth $1,000 into a two-year CD, a fifth $1,000 into a 30-month CD, and with her final $1,000 purchased a three-year CD. Now she has a CD coming due every six months with $1,000 plus interest that if she needs the money she can use, but if she chooses, she can reinvest into another three-year CD. As you can see from these examples, laddering CDs is fairly simple, and it provides the opportunity for a higher rate of return without all the sacrifice of liquidity. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me. Come back again next time when I'll be talking about more personal finance and investments topics.